Welcome back to my YouTube channel and Happy New Year! Today we have a really exciting video. It's actually the video that launched my YouTube channel in the first place and that is a room tour. It's been a little over a year since my last room tour and upon making it I had a lot of comments of people asking to do a more detailed version and to explain any tips and tricks I have for other collectors. To remedy this I've added a little Q&A section where you guys ask me questions and I answer them. <laughs> this video will entail me pretty much going over the entire of my room. I'm not gonna go over every single toy in here unfortunately guys that would probably be a th that would just be so long it'd probably be as long as those freaking salmon cat videos like it's just not it's not gonna be short <laughs> So I'm not going to cover every little toy in here, but I will try to cover the standout toys and the things I was really excited to have in my collection and at least give a little more detail into them. But before we get into the nitty gritty of my room, today's video is sponsored by our friends over at Bai Japan. This is incredibly relevant to this video because I'm going to be bringing up Bai quite a bit. As a toy collector, I frequent Bai Japan a lot. Many people ask me where I get some of my more rare toys. Really the only way I've been able to obtain such rare pieces is because of Bai Japan. Bai is a proxy service where you can purchase items on Mercari and Yahoo Japan auction, have them sent to Bai's warehouse in Japan, and they will send them to your home address. I've always been restricted to what's available on eBay, and unfortunately eBay uppricing is real and very insane. It also makes items that are almost nearly impossible to get just accessible again. And if you're like me and there's a lot of kind of old rare figures and items that you've been wanting, Buy Japan is a really great place to check out. And if you're a first time user and you use my link, you will receive a 10% off coupon. That's right. The link will be in the description for anyone who wants to check it out. All right, on to the room tour. Ah! So here we are in my room, and I'm going to start off with my desk. This is where I edit my videos, where I draw my art, and where I do a lot of other fun crafting stuff like scrapbooking and card making. I keep a lot of the essentials here, like my keyboard, my scrapbook, my grid mat, and my tablet. For my drawing station, I've been using my XB Pen Line Play Collaboration tablet for the past three years, and I really like it. It's also really cute. And to top it off, I have a tiny crab holding my tablet pen. Because I'm sitting here for long periods of time doing work, I like to keep myself inspired, so that's why a lot of my favorite toys, posters, and trinkets will be in this area, just to keep the inspiration flowing. Traveling up onto my desk, I have this small kitchen stand that I actually got in the kitchen section at Daiso, but I've been using it to display my toys and I really like it. This corner next to my desk has some of my most colorful figures and some of my most brightest as well. Here I have my Hatsune Miku figure HSP version displayed. I placed her here since it makes her front and center and she's one of my favorite anime figures that I own. I got her last year in a joint buy haul I did on my channel, and I think she's perfect for my room, and her colors really complement the little pink figures I have next to her, like my half-age Madoka and my Pinky Street Kirikira Music Hour figure. Man, that was a mouthful. <laughs> There's a lot of little trinkets in this area, from pins to marbles to keychains. I also keep all of my pens and markers here. I'm a sucker for fun pencils like this one with the old fat Pikachu design. A new addition to my room is this banana Cupie baby. I have a little bit of an unpopular opinion, but I've always preferred Cupie babies over Sunny Angel babies. In terms of design, I find the Cupie baby just to be a lot more endearing. Underneath are some of my larger toys with bases, like my Toro and Kuro figures, which are articulated, so I like to give them little accessories from time to time, it's why he's holding a little grocery basket. Next to that is a tiered acrylic stand that has some of my favorite little figures. Figures like my Tamagotchi toys that I got when I was 11, they came free with the Tamagotchi movie, my Hamtaro figures, my Super Milkchan figure, 
and of course two of my rarest figure sets, my Toy Works Nichijou figures and my Alien 9 Gachapon figures. So let's talk about them. The most expensive thing in this room, my Nichijou figures, are hands down one of my top favorite things in my collection. Toy Works, the company that made these, knocked it out of the park with bringing the fun cartoonish style of the show into these minifigures. I own the full collection, so you're going to see the three other figures in this video. On the opposite end of the spectrum, these may be some of the cheapest figures I have received. I acquired my Alien 9 figures two years ago, and I got them for $15 on Baie Japan. Compared to the resale price, this was a steal to me and one of the major reasons I use Baie. I also really like Alien 9 and highly recommend the manga. I actually just acquired this set this Christmas. My boyfriend got me an unopened sushi remet set and it didn't fit quite well in my remit cabinet, so I put it in its own display shelf. It was just my luck that the next day I would get a mini brands that came with a Kura Sushi inside of it. I was so excited, it actually opens, so I put this on the top of the display shelf. How often do you have to clean slash dust since you have so much stuff? <laughs> Yeah, I think this is probably like one of the most asked questions I get about my room is what in the world is the cleaning situation? Point blank, I clean a lot. My room collects dust, but it's kind of hard to see because everything is white in here. So one of the things I noticed was that if you have black shelves, you're gonna see the dust on it so much more. So to kind of minimize the visual aspect of dust, I bought white shelves. And this is because you can't see the dust on them as much. I like to dust every three weeks, but every like two months or three months, I take everything down and just dust and spray everything. Like, I just really enjoy it. For my figures, I have two sizes of makeup brushes. I have this smaller one, and then I have this bigger one. This one is to get into small crevices, and I mostly use this one when I don't necessarily want to like bring down all my toys. This is just like a quick dust in the little crevices inside. This one is if I do want to bring them down and then I just like go crazy at them. At the, this is also for their bases, like figure bases and just like the areas on the shelves. Like these two, really great. I love them. Next to my desk, I have a CD player, and I've been trying to amass a little bit of a small CD collection. These are just some of the ones that I have right now. One of my favorite CDs in here is the Princess Tutu anime opening, Morning Grace, on CD. It's really cool. Moving up on my wall is my color coordinated cubby filled with a lot of collectibles. My favorite thing about this display is that the majority of the toys in here are actually the toys I've had since I was a kid. These are all the toys I played with as a child. My mom kept a lot of my toys when I was younger and not too long ago we went through the garage and found them all in a bin. So I was finally able to put them back up in my room. It's really fun to be able to look up and just see a lot of the toys that I did like a lot when I was a kid. This top shelf also has some figures and books. I honestly really love displaying things like boxes and books and magazines, stuff that you wouldn't really consider room decor, but I think they are some of the best things to display and are really great for just filling up any empty space. Let's look at the book. On this wall is also my figure shelf where I keep some of my anime figures displayed. This shelf houses a lot of my cutesy anime figures and magical girl anime figures. I also like to keep this shelf color coordinated with orange toys and green toys. I also recently painted this shelf and added some fake frosting and fake cookies onto it. I think this color change matches really well with the figures on it. As the years have gone by, my opinions of figures have changed a lot. I think ever since I started making garage kits, it's really changed the way I view figure collecting. I view them as art pieces more than anything now, so I just keep ones that I find visually pleasing to me. My goal in the future is to get a lot more garage kits in this collection. I've done a couple, but they've all been commissions, and I haven't been able to have one for myself, so I would really like to have them in my collection soon. 
So moving on from that shelf, we're going to move over to the food corner of my room where I have a lot of Remit miniature and a lot of food memorabilia in that area. So let's dive into that. Located at the very top of my Remet cabinet is some of my McDonald's memorabilia. This year, I picked up the 1976 Remco McDonald's doll from my local mall, thanks to Ninja Exchange, and was able to restore them. My McDonald's Miku that I customize is also here. She was one of my first figure customizing projects, and I'm still super fond of her. With that said, let's move on to my Remet cabinet. I was very shocked to find out that a lot of you really liked my Remet miniature collection. This is kind of a niche hobby that I have and being into miniature food and Remet in particular. I've been collecting it since I was 10 and I was very happy to find that a lot of you also really liked it. This cabinet here is filled with a lot of sets that don't particularly have a playset to go along with it so I keep these in a separate cabinet. I collect mostly Remet from 2001 all the way up to 2015. I'm not a big fan of more modern Remet sets, although I do have my exceptions. I do have plans in the future to do an entire video around the subject of Remet Miniature, the company, and where to get them. I don't really consider myself a big Disney fan by any extent, but I've been currently really obsessed with the Deco Disney cakes that Remet came out with in 2010. Remet's early collaborations with Disney have some of the best design choices I've ever seen in Remet sets. I think it's because they have such heavy theming and they pull a lot from the Craft Deco Den, and I really just love some of their early collaborations, they look wonderful. Advice for maximizing space. So my room is pretty tiny. It's a very small room, so I try to maximize space as much as I possibly can. My biggest tip I can give out to you guys for people with smaller rooms, like myself, is to utilize your wall space. The thing with smaller rooms is you're not gonna be able to house bigger things. You don't really have a lot of space to put in bookshelves and side tables. If you don't have room for those bigger items like I don't, uh, the best thing you can do is utilize your wall space. And I do this by using shelves, cabinets, command strips, hooks, hangers, literally anything you can stick on your wall. I mean, I've seen people hang stuff from the ceiling. Like, you can really get creative with this. And one of my new favorite things, which I get a lot of questions about, are my clear acrylic cases. But they're originally for Funko Pops, but I put anything that's three inches or smaller inside of it. Another one of my greatest tips for maximizing space, especially on shelves themselves, because shelves are completely flat, you really only have like one direct line to place all your figures. But one of my favorite things is the utilization of clear acrylic stands. You've probably seen them a lot throughout this video, but one of my best tips is putting them on the shelf. So I like to put my acrylic stands pretty much horizontally on a shelf so it fits on there. And then you have this like tiered step and then I place my figures pretty much on top of those cleared steps. And I think this gives so much of a better look because not only are you able to fully see your figures, and then you also have space underneath now. So not only did you just double your space, it also just looks way more visually pleasing to me. Many people ask where I get my tiered shelves. I've always gotten them from Daiso. There's a Daiso near me. So if you have a Daiso near you, check their like storage little area in the back. They always have a bunch of tiered cases, but I'm sure you can probably find them on Amazon as well, or maybe Etsy too. Directly underneath my Remit cabinet is this Baskin Robbins sign and some magnets and more food keychains. And to really top it off with the food theme is my food sample book. If you're unaware, in Japan, food sample is basically the fake model food outside of a restaurant to display the menu items. There is an entire art and industry behind food sample, and it's a really cool industry, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very interested in it. I know they also have some kits that you can try, so you can make one yourself. So moving on to the stuff on my side table, I have this tiny Peko-chan Nendoroid, which I'm not a big fan of Nendoroids, mostly because they feel like pop figures but for the anime community, but this one in particular really caught my eye. I think she's so cute. I've got some other weird little trinkets around here, but we have to talk about the star of the show, and that is my convenience store setup. Let me get the lights on real quick. Yes, I installed tiny fairy lights into my little convenience store setup. It looks so good, I love my convenience store setup. The convenience store shelf is an officially licensed Remet miniature shelf and I obtained it using Buy Japan. And most of the Remet inside is of various different Remet sets. So I recommend checking out the convenience store ones if you're interested. 
this little shelf is comprised of mostly junk food like candy and chips, but I really would like to have a second one with more healthier options like produce. There's nothing I love more than rearranging this tiny convenience store setup. I find it just so therapeutic, and I also just love all the attention to detail, like the tiny ice cream freezer with small miniature ice cream on the inside. And some mini brands actually fit with the scaling of Remit Miniature, so I do have some mini brands in here. Similar to the layout of the shelf on my desk, I like to also keep more figures directly underneath this shelf. I sometimes swap these out because I have a couple larger figures, but a huge standout to me is this Pokemon Mr. Donut sculpture that I got last year at DesignerCon. This is from the artist Zarda Puya, and I absolutely love this piece. The detail on it is gorgeous. On this side table is another three-tiered minifigure stand, and here in the middle you'll see the rest of my Nichijou figures. At the very top are my half-age Precure figures. I don't know what it is about this particular size, but I love half-age figures. I think this size for anime figures, like this Gachapon size, is so incredibly cute, and I love having these displayed in my collection. One of my other favorite playsets in my collection is my 1980 Lika-chan McDonald's playset. However, this is another one of those toys that if you look up on eBay, you're gonna see it for like $500 every single time. This is why I recommend if you're looking for a more rare playset, there's actually three in this line from 1970 all the way to 1990, I would highly recommend using a proxy service. I was able to obtain this entire playset with food and furniture included for only $40. Within that order, I also picked up the Hatsune Miku Lika Chan doll, and I think they look really good together. In the same corner, I have a grid that holds my stationery and sticker collection. I also like hanging books and keychains here. I got these small hooks at Daiso recently, and they're perfect for my smaller keychains. I have amassed a lot of stickers and stationery over the years because I do letter making on my free time. If you're interested in that, I have a full stationery tour up on my YouTube right now. I mostly go into details on where I get my stickers as well as some of my stationery. If you're interested in seeing that full thing, I highly do recommend the video. I also do some letter making in that video as well. Other than that, I put a lot of silly little clips and keychains on here like my cupies or my tiny clips that look like shrimp and other miscellaneous foods. I also like to put some sentimental photos on here with me and my friends. Finally moving on to the other side of my room is where my bed is located. I've had a lot of questions of people wondering if I even had a bed, um, but this is indeed a bed, it just looks like a couch. I just take all my plushies off every night and sleep on top of this and then just rearrange them in the morning. I really love the Astro Boy theme it has going on. I got this blanket from Nothing Gold and I feel like it goes so well with my tiny Astro Boy pillow. Speaking of Astro Boy, a couple Christmases ago my parents got me this Astro Boy Lego and it's a miracle that it's just been sitting on the side of my bed and nothing bad has happened to it. Like it hasn't fallen once and there's not even museum putty under it. It, it just stays. It truly amazes me. Okay, next question. How do you choose the colors of your room? Colors are a huge aspect to take into factor when you are putting things up in your room. Because I own so many toys and so many tiny toys, depending on how you display them, they can kind of disappear. Or better, they can get lost in the stimuli of everything. If I place a certain toy next to another one, it's almost like a little relationship. If they're not bringing out the best in each other, it's better to move it. So I like to put certain color schemes next to each other so they have the opportunity to let each other both shine in a way that's not too overly stimulating. Another big tip to take into consideration when putting stuff up in your room is the color of your walls. My walls are white which means anything in my room that has white in it will essentially be an invisible color. This is because it matches my walls. If you have anything with white, that essentially becomes invisible. Not truly invisible, but invisible to the first glance and the way you are taking in the colors of the room, 
that will essentially become invisible. I would really say take in consideration of the color of your walls because you can really find things that match the colors and try to create more interesting color shapes with the invisible color. I hope that makes any sense. Another big thing is I love implementing color schemes into my room. I have my cubby that is completely color coded. So all greens are in one cubby, all blues are in another, all yellows, they're really separated by color. And I think that's really fun. It's visually a treat for me. So switch things around, really think about the colors you're placing in, in your room. I just think it's important. Color is important. Let's go. So moving on to the right side of my wall, I have a figure shelf here. I quite like the color scheme of this corner a lot. There's a lot of prominent blues and pinks and purples over here, and I think it just really makes a lot of the figures stand out. I've got some Gloomy Bear figures, I've got some Super Milk Chan, I definitely have some other sparse Sergeant Frogs around here. There's just a hodgepodge of so many different characters over here. Because of the color scheme and characters over here, I feel like this shelf gives a lot of a Cartoon Network feel and I really like it. A big standout to me in this section is my SH Figure Arts Origami Cyclone, and I just really love the colors on him, I think he looks really cool. Another one of my favorite figures in here is one I got recently, and it's a scale figure of Black Rock Shooter. Because my room is so colorful, I was worried that the monochromatic color scheme of this figure wouldn't match my room. But I stand corrected, because this figure looks amazing in my room. I'm a sucker for the base, and I love all the dynamic movement in her hair, her jacket, and even the chains. There are some hints of pink on this shelf, and I feel like Halloween Chan is a big section of it. I spray painted her base to also match her pink hair more, just to add to that. The rest of these figures have very prominent flowing hair. I think I just really like movement in figures, and I think flowing hair is one of the best ways to convey that. Saint Seiya was an old classic that I used to like watching when I was younger, and this has to be one of my most gorgeous male figures that I own. Moving on to the shelf above this one is my blue, yellow, pink shelf. I predominantly put figures and toys that are blue and turquoise with accents of pink and yellow. There is quite an assortment of different figures on here, but I do have them all on this acrylic stand so they're easier to see. I have my blue rose figure, I have my Rosalina amiibo, I have those two guys from Monsters University. My most recent find for this shelf is this clown cupie baby I thrifted. He was in horrible condition when I found him, but I was able to restore him back to health. Moving to the upper right is another shelf where I have a couple of my Monster High dolls and a miniature desk. I don't really collect a lot of dolls, but the Monster High dolls I found last year at Designer Con for $20 each, so I was finally able to get Abby and Gulia, and the Cupid doll I got for myself a couple birthdays ago. And I swear this is the last time I'll bring up a remit set, but there's another one. Directly next to my Monster High dolls is my remit miniature desk. There is actually a real working light in there, I just haven't put the batteries in there yet, but I did fully furnish it. In all my years of collecting Remit Miniature, I've actually never wanted to collect anything other than the food sets. But when I got this desk last year, that completely changed. I mean, look at this tiny disposable camera. I'm definitely trying to open my horizons to other Remit sets that I've never gotten before. There are so many ones that are dedicated to other miniature items, like all these miniature pieces of makeup. So I have this entire drawer filled with them. I just really started to enjoy these as well, I just never expected it because I've been so stern in only having food sets, but this tiny desk changed it all. The best part of this desk is that the scaling is actually pretty big, so I can fit some figures and dolls onto it. I've put Gulia there before, but my favorite person to put is my tiny Frodo doll, mostly because it makes no sense, and seeing him with a tiny flip phone is really funny to me. We're going to move on to the left side of my room where I keep a lot more toys inside these acrylic cases. 
the very top of this first acrylic case is where I keep a couple books and a couple toys. I have two of my Monchichis. I like to keep some in the box, so I have the grandpa one in his original packaging. And I also have one dressed as Kuropi from the Sanrio X Monchichi collaboration. Directly next to him is, of course, my iconic Frodo doll. Look at him. <laughs> so Frodo is my absolute favorite Lord of the Rings character, hands down, uh, right next to Gandalf. But I really wanted a Frodo figure or doll or literally anything. And the biggest thing with like Frodo merch is like the dolls and the figures just don't look like him um, at all. <laughs> I wanted like a good figure. So when I saw this show side figure, I was like, this has like the bone structure of Elijah Wood. It's got the, the foundation to make a really good figure. So I got this figure and I was like, I'm gonna paint his face. Like I'm gonna paint his face to look more like Elijah Wood. And I feel like I really did that. I busted out my micro paintbrushes and I just was like, yeah, this is gonna work. I like thinned out his eyebrows. I gave him lashes. I changed his eye color to match like the actual eye color of Elijah Wood. I feel like insane same. And I'm glad to say that I, he's one of the best things in my room. He may not match my room like at all, but I do not care. Directly below is my queer cabinet where I keep my figures that are three inches or smaller. I also like to keep sets of figures in here. So any figure that comes in a pair of two or more. I have quite a lot of mini figures that come in pairs. So I had to get two of these cabinets so I could fill them up. In that shelf is my Toy Cube Astro Boy set. I purchased these two years ago at DesignerCon at the Toy Cube booth. These were so cool to see in person, and when I finally opened them, I was so excited. My favorite one is definitely the Astro Boy dressed in the really cute cowboy outfit. I keep other sets like my Sergeant Frog sets, my Tokidoki sets, and my Pop Mart sets. I really like figures that come in pairs or pairs of three, and they just display really well inside these clear cabinets. Two of my favorite figures in that cabinet are my Little Big Planet toys. I got these on an eBay listing and I really wanted the Sackbot. That Sackbot was quite hard to find and once I finally found a listing for him, I knew I had to buy him. Little Big Planet 1 and 2 were some of my favorite games as a child. To fill up space around these cabinets, I also like to hang up plushies and keychains around them. Directly next to this cabinet is another clear acrylic cabinet next to it. I would say this cabinet has a little more colorfulness to it, and it also houses my Sanrio watch collection. I try my best to organize these cases by height, so figures with similar height are going to be standing next to each other. A lot of the toys in here were gifted or thrifted, which I now just realize rhymes. <laughs> But continuing on from this shelf, directly above this case is a little bit of a small token of my love and gratitude to the Scooby-Doo franchise. I'm a really big Scooby-Doo fan and a huge Fred fan at that, so I keep my Scooby-Doo related merchandise, like my Kelly dolls, all up here just, just so I can look at it. That's my room. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun making it. I really do appreciate the love and support I get on my room. It's so nice to meet other collectors and talk to other people with the same just collecting instinct that I have. And it's just, it's so wonderful. I have some plans for a Princess Tutu garage kit I'm gonna work on. I really want to make a remet miniature video. There's just a lot of other things in the works and hopefully I can get them done on a much more regular schedule than last year. Sorry I was gone. <laughs> 
But on that note, um, please check out my Instagram. I always plug my Instagram because that's where I'm posting all my art, but also check out my TikTok too. I post my art and some other kind of like lifestyle stuff on there too. I don't know if you guys would ever be interested in like a fashion video. I don't know if that would be kind of like weird and insane. <laughs> I don't know, if you guys were interested in a fashion video, maybe like let me know, cause that'd be kind of fun. Thank you for sticking around for the entire video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and love you all. Okay, bye, bye.